Hey guys, Leslie here, and I haven't seen you in a while, but I want to get back into it because I get so many DMs from you. I had no idea that there were so many people with hair problems <laughs> who wanted help. So um, I want to answer a question that I've been asked quite a bit recently, which is, can you please help me reverse my telogen effluvium hair loss? And telogen effluvium is uh, just a fancy word for hair loss that is not caused by autoimmune conditions or by, say, thyroid conditions or by, say, traction pulling. And um, that's really what I want to talk about today because, yes, you can indeed reverse hair loss due to telogen effluvium. <clears throat> now, the um, paper I want to talk about today comes from the Journal of Nutritional Science. It was a team from Islamabad in Pakistan that examined a group of 40 women between the ages of 20 and 50 who were all suffering from hair loss. And these individuals were examined, they were asked about their daily habits. Um, in particular, they're focused in carefully on a few factors, um, getting vitamin D into their diet and uh, into their bodies. And how did they do this? Well, you can get vitamin D from grass-fed milk products and we've talked about grass-fed ghee and grass-fed butter and other videos and the, important, um, the importance of this as a source for those who can tolerate the casein protein and lactose. But um, in addition, they also looked at whether or not these women were wearing sunscreen and whether or not they actually went outside during the day to expose their skin to sunlight. Because of course, our bodies are capable in their beautiful innate wisdom of manufacturing vitamin D. We don't necessarily need to go out and buy it. We can make it. But in order for our skin to synthesize vitamin D, we need to be out in a light spectrum that allows our skin to make it. And I can tell you that for someone like me, I have skin type three. There are five different skin types. Um, skin type three basically often tans and doesn't usually burn. And so I'm right in the middle there. And skin type one is for skin that actually burns like instantly. And skin type five is for skin that always tans. And if you are skin type one or skin type three like me, living here in the United Kingdom uh, in January, I've just checked my DMinder app, which is free and tells you based on your geographic location, how long you need to go outside, how much clothing you need to, to take off in order to get the sunlight you need to synthesize vitamin D in your body. I looked at my DMinder app yesterday and it said, try again in 40 days, 40 days, because there's no light spectrum here that is going to help me make vitamin D. When I readjusted the app so that it said skin type one, which is the type of skin that burns instantly, let's think about Irish skin or Scandinavian skin, said exactly the same thing. So it really doesn't matter what type of skin you have. If you live in a northern climate, you are not going to be getting vitamin D at this time of year. And guess what? That means that probably you are going to experience some hair shedding. Now, in this particular study, they actually, um, they actually were giving the women 200,000 international units of vitamin D. That's a huge amount. If you go into your local um, health food store, you might notice that they will be selling vitamin D in amounts of 1,000 to maybe maximum 10,000 international units per day. So 200,000 is a factor of 20 higher than the highest level I have actually seen here. It's mega dose and obviously i'm not going to advocate you do this because this was in a laboratory in an academic laboratory setting where these women were monitored all the time and there is such a thing as vitamin d toxicity however what they noticed was that by the end of this trial 85 percent of the women had been able to regrow their hair which is pretty remarkable now the authors point to earlier studies which also trialed vitamin D and looked at whether or not it could improve hair. And they noted that simply having a treatment dose of 50,000 international units, so a quarter of what was used in this Pakistani study, 
they were able to elicit very good results. And then they had a maintenance dose of 1,000 international units per week, which is, I would say, relatively low. So that 50,000 international units dose was given per week. And that 200,000 international units dose by the Pakistani group was also done per week. So it's not a per day amount. Well, you take it one day and then you wait a week before you do it again. So just to make clear, because it is too high a dose and you don't want toxicity, but um, the results were, were very good. And what they also noticed was that those women who did not use sunscreen and who were able to eat um, grass-fed dairy products uh, were actually, they had better results. And the reason why is very clear. It's because if you don't have sunscreen on, whenever you go outside, even if it's just for a minute or two, your skin is going to do what it knows how to do, and that is synthesize vitamin D for you. And similarly with, um, with grass-fed dairy products, actually the study simply specifies dairy products as opposed to grass-fed, but I will specify grass-fed here because that is the type of dairy product that has higher vitamin D levels. These women were able to get vitamin D from a nutritional source. Now, very important, 90% of Americans time is spent indoors. In the United Kingdom, Brits spend 92% of their life indoors. It has been estimated that the average Westerner will live 53 years of their life indoors. This is not how we used to live. We used to live outside. We would walk places, we would work the soil, we would hunt things, um, but this is not normal. This is a great kind of experiment. And for millennia, we have lived a different way and our body has adapted to different situations to keep us healthy. And one of those is this ability to turn sunlight into vitamin D, almost like plants are able to take sunlight and turn it into chlorophyll. So what I want to say through this is that if you want to think about reversing your hair loss, please consider using the DMinder app, finding out exactly when you need to go outside, at what time, how much of your skin you need to expose without sunscreen, get that vitamin D naturally for free, and try to get some amount of vitamin D from food sources, if you can. Sardines would be another, another opportunity to get that. So for those of you with telogen effluvium, this video is for you. Um, I'll put the citation for that study out of Pakistan into the notes. Uh, I'll put a link to the DMinder app developed by doctors, completely free to you, uh, in the notes as well. And uh, if you've got any questions, please drop them below. I will answer questions that are asked in the first seven days after this video is released. Uh, it is quite hard to answer them all. Uh, I do respect everyone's question though. And what I will do is try to put them into groups. Um, some people will ask one question and I will try to address that question as a group just to save time because now there are just so many people who, who have these, these issues. And if you like this video and you want more, um, more information on gray hair reversal or hair regrowth, please just click the subscribe button. Thanks so much. See you next time.